In 1862, Johann Nepomuk Kuhn, a professional organ builder, came from southern Germany to Menedorf on behalf of E. F. Falke, an organ building firm in Ludwigsburg, to build the first organ in the newly redecorated Reformed Church. He felt so at home in this idyllic place that he decided to stay on the shores of Lake Zurich. In 1864, he founded the firm of Kuhn Organ Builders. His son Karl Theodor was born one year later. In 1872 he built his first concert hall organ for the Tornhalle in Zurich, which was followed by further organs for the cathedral in St. Gallen and the Grossmünster in Zurich. Following Johann Nepomuk's death in 1888, his son Karl Theodor took over the firm. He modernized and enlarged the workshop, which experts throughout the world subsequently regarded with great respect. Today, the original location on the Seerstrasse is a protected building and contains offices and the extensive company archive. In the course of time, the workshop buildings underwent several alterations and extensions. The last major alteration was officially opened in May 2013. As a result, we now have outstandingly equipped workshops that provide ideal operating conditions. We use only selected first-rate wood for our organs. Our timber suppliers let us know whenever they find a particularly fine tree trunk. We are continually on the lookout for very slow-growing, straight-growing wood, especially for types of wood such as oak and spruce. Here a plank of spruce is collected from the wood store and transported to the cutting shop. The pieces of wood are then planed and subjected to further processing in the machine room. Depending on the intended purpose, different types of wood are used. In the joiner's workshop, the pieces are united to produce an organ case. The instruments are assembled in the assembly shop. Wood is also employed for the inner workings of the organ. A hard, tough, fine wood for certain mechanical parts, whilst others require wood that is particularly lightweight or especially airtight. The console is built of oak and copper beech. The small coupler rocking tablets are made of spruce. Horn beam is used for the moving mechanical parts. The black keys of manuals and pedals are made of ebony. It's exceedingly hard and can be highly polished. Ideal qualities for the purpose. Draw stop knobs are frequently made of this wood. Ebony, various veneers and other special types of wood are kept in the veneer store. Wooden pipes are usually made of spruce or oak wood. We use pear tree wood for the block of wooden pipes, so that the flue can be very finely formed. The stream of air required for the organ pipes is provided by bellows. These are made of wood and sheepskin and supply wind at a constant pressure. Parchment is used for the hinges of the folding bellows. The valves are made of very closely ringed Scots pine or spruce. Sheepskin is used as a sealant.
walnut or oak wood is used to make wind chests on which the pipes later stand. When a key is depressed, the wind in the wind chest is directed to the appropriate pipe. The upper board is a thick plank of oak wood with the required drilled holes to receive the pipes of a stop or rank of pipes. The wind flows through these holes into the organ pipes. The pipes produce the sound. They are made of wood or metal. Metal pipes are manufactured in the tin workshop. Bars of tin are melted in a furnace and a specific amount of lead is added to produce the desired alloy. The mixing ratio has a certain effect on the sound of the pipes. The appropriate alloy is selected depending on the quality of sound of a stop or rank of pipes that's desired. The more tin contained in the alloy, the more noticeable the overtones and the brighter the sound. The metalworking process for producing metal pipes has remained the same for centuries. Here metal sheets are cast for the production of metal pipes. The cast sheets lie on tables ready to be planed on both sides on a special tin planing machine. Here, new organ pipes are made out of the plain sheets. Soldering the pipes is an important stage in the operation. Basically, every pipe can only produce a certain sound with a certain quality and volume. With regard to the production of sound, we distinguish between two types of pipe, flu or labial pipes, and reed or lingual pipes. In flu pipes, the air column inside the body of the pipe is made to oscillate, comparable to how a recorder functions. In reed pipes, a metal tongue is made to vibrate by being blown on whereby the sound is amplified and modulated by the resonator placed on top, which may be compared with the principle of which a clarinet or saxophone works. The longest pipe that has ever been produced here was about six meters long. Twelve people were needed to roll it up. Eight, nine, four, four. 
Restoration work to historical pipes is also carried out here. A pipe that has just been made doesn't produce the right sound. It has to be taught to sound, that is, it has to be voiced. The pipes are pre-voiced in the voicing workshop. By means of his highly sensitive corrections, the voicer gives each pipe the right sound and the right pitch on the voicing machine. The final fine adjustments to the sound are made only when the organ is on site, so that it can be adapted to the acoustics of the room. consists of three main elements. The keyboard is played, the wind system supplies the compressed air, and the pipes produce the sound. To enable the whole ensemble to operate, some more parts are necessary. Action, wind chest, and case. The action is the connection between keyboard and wind chest. The wind chest is the core of the organ. Here, the wind is distributed to the various organ pipes. The case is a wooden, carefully designed casing, which totally encloses many organs. all three branches of organ building. Building new organs, restoration and organ maintenance. Building new organs involves realizing individual concepts of sound in various styles. We try to find the best solution for each project, taking all the relevant circumstances into consideration. Even when designing the front pipe arrangement, which is how an organ presents itself visually, we deliberately maintain a variety of options, and we consider it important to advance the continuing development of the organ with innovations in the sound, as well as in technical aspects. The first drafts are produced during the bidding phase, in our design office. Later, all the detailed plans are drawn here for the workshop. Our designers are skilled organ builders who have undergone extensive training and they oversee their projects from the very first hand-drawn concepts to completion in a church or concert hall. One interesting variation on building a new organ is to build a historicized organ. This means freely creating and building a new organ in a historical style or, as in this example, the main organ of the old abbey church at Belle in the Bernese Jura. Reconstructing an organ, closely modeling it on the style of Joseph Bossard in 1721. This approach involves utilizing old wooden connections and methods of production. The combined experience of our restoration specialists from their work with historical organs is especially valuable for such tasks. The purpose of restoration is to make history audible and to retain the substance and functional capacity of a valuable historical organ. A fine example of the restoration of a small organ is this historical chamber organ built by Johann Konrad Speisegger in 1728. A far larger organ that we restored is located in Vienna. The organ of the Franciscan Church in Vienna was built in 1642 by Johann Wöckel and is undoubtedly one of the most significant protected organs in Austria. Another important organ that we restored is the main organ of the Basilica St. Martin in Weingarten, built by Josef Gabler between 1736 and 1750. Every old organ has its own history, which is connected with people, epochs and events. And every such history is different. This is what makes historical organs unique contemporary witnesses. 
Our activities render tangible what our forebears thought and how they acted. Our restorations are carried out in accordance with accepted aspects of the protection of monuments. For us it's vital that our work be consistently documented in compliance with scientific criteria. By organ maintenance we ensure that the value of the organs is preserved for the long term. By consistent organization we ensure that regular economical maintenance is guaranteed. Our maintenance specialists can be contacted directly by our customers. Alors on contrôle le troisième bout du troisième clavier, la mécanique. We set great store by continuity and personal contact, as this allows our customers to make dependable, long-term plans for maintenance work, and it contributes much towards minimizing the cost of such work. On commence au deuxième mi. The word organ comes from the Greek expression organon, which generally means tool or instrument. And in the field of music also contains the meaning of sound tool or musical instrument. Since its invention by Tisibius, the organ is extricably linked to a basic area of conflict, namely whether it's a music machine or a musical instrument. At the same time, however, the organ is an independent, carefully designed work of art. It's the most diverse musical instrument with the greatest range of sounds, and it fascinates by the power of its natural sounds and the size of its construction. The potential for further developments of sound and engineering is by no means exhausted. In addition, the demands on the instrument are continually changing, together with musical styles, acoustic surroundings, and the different requirements of customers and organists. The yearning of humankind for the mystical, for perfection, and for a return to values and traditions of the past, bestows a special significance on the organ, even in this 21st century. For over 2,000 years, organs have been built and maintained. New instruments have been created in each epoch in the style of that time. Kuhn Organ Builders will continue to uphold this tradition.